I know what some of you are thinking. There's that crazy Canuck going to the mailbox to get another fountain pen, freezing his baguettes off. You wanna hurry this up, Clark? I'm freezing my baguettes off. Well, sorry to disappoint you. It's not that cold out. It's uh, just hovering around zero degrees. That's 32 degrees Fahrenheit for those Yanks among you. So it's shirt sleeve weather here in Calgary. Told you. And my wife has gone off to the pool to exercise. So I took the opportunity to use my Mickey D's coupon to go get myself some lunch. And I'm going to enjoy watching my tube buddy and watch those numbers climb because I just posted that video giving away a free pen. It's really cool to watch those numbers go up. It's fascinating to see how many people are interested in winning a $4 pen. It's a nice pen for $4 though, don't get me wrong. So let's see how we're doing this morning. Ooh, it's going up. Look at that. Zoom. <laughs> That's really interesting. But I do have a video for you today. And it is cartridges, cartridges, cartridges. What the f is going on with cartridges? And how do they fit in my pen? And it's coming to you right now. Thank you for joining me and putting up with my silliness. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug. And as I said on the road, today's video is about cartridges, cartridges, cartridges. You see what our competition's airing? Oh my God, cartridges. I have to thank my friend Ron for suggesting this video as I'm not a regular cartridge user. I tend to prefer lots and lots of bottles of ink myself. Many of you do like to use cartridges, of course, uh, for the convenience and for other reasons. It's certainly simpler to snap a cartridge into a pen than fiddle with a converter over a bottle of ink. And those bottles tend to leak or smash around in your backpack. So as a follow-up to my previous video on cartridges, which you can see right here, I thought I'd do some research. I thought it would be easy. <laughs> Just shoot me now. Machines! Machines! Why don't you just shoot me? It's not. Apparently even standard international isn't standard. But I digress, so let me cut to the chase here. I've done some experiments with a bunch of pens. As you can see, there's a bunch of pens in front of me. And I put them into five categories. They are, one, pens that take standard international cartridges. B, pens that take Lamy cartridges. Four, three, pens that take Parker cartridges, short or long, or short and long. Four, pens that are proprietary. And Z, pens that I have no f clue about what cartridge they take. For anything else, you're on your own. There are resources online uh, which are relatively helpful with most popular brands of fountain pens, but they tend to ignore uh, Chinese brands uh, of pen unless they are brands like Cross, Schaefer, Parker, or Waterman, which are made in China, but purists tend to ignore that fact. I'll put links to the various sites like Goulet Pens, Luxi Pens, and one really useful list at Pendemonium which lists many brands that use standard international cartridges and specifies the companies that make their own cartridges. For this video, I'm only going to focus on those pens that I own. Your mileage may vary. On the left of your screen, I have pens on to the left of me, pens to the right of me. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right, here I am stuck in the middle with you. And pen BBS, stuck in the middle with me. On the left of your screen, you will see a bunch of pens. More than three is actually a bunch. It's uh, technical talk, I know. This bunch on the left will take combinations of Lamy Long, Parker Short, or Parker Long. The bunch on the right will take Standard International, 
this bunch in front of me is just Penn BBS, which I'll deal with on its own, and the group, and there are only three, so it's a group, that are hiding in behind here. Those three hiding in behind are a Visconti, a Parker 45, and a Cross, which I'll deal with separately. Let's start on the right with the standard international crowd. This is the Delike New Moon 3. I don't know if all Delike take the standard, but this one does. Next, we have the Moon Man M6. Not all men in the moon are created equal, but this one takes the standard, as does the Moon Man behind it, which is this M600. This is the one with the Schmidt nib. It doesn't have the Schmidt in it anymore. I have a, a Bobby Bent in it. But um, because it was designed around the Schmidt nib, it takes uh, a standard international, uh, whereas the other Moonmans don't. We'll come to those in a moment. Then we have the Faber-Castell Loom. They make their own ink, but they also follow the international standard. So that's Faber-Castell. I did some funky things with them. Um, and they're standard international cartridges. That's the Faber-Castell Loom. This is the Jinhao Centennial, and it takes a standard international. And behind that is another Jinhao. I don't have either the X450 or the X750 anymore, but they take a standard cartridge as well as this 159. Now, let's move over to the left. The first one up is the Moon Man S1. This accepts Lamy cartridges, but it will not take the Parker long or shorts. And what's interesting is there's just a fraction of a millimeter difference between these. Next is a Wingsong Lamy All-Star clone, which you would expect takes Lamy, and it does but it also takes Parker short or long cartridges. Then we have a Lingmo Lorelei 019, which is close to identical to a Pen BBS 308. It will take a Lamy cartridge, but none of the Parkers. Next is a Picasso 996. Just want to look at that nib for a minute. It's a beauty. The Picasso 996 only takes a Lamy cartridge. Next up is the Moonman M600S. Now this is the special version of the Moonman that came with a Moonman nib. Of course, this has a Bobby Bent nib in it now. But because it had a Moonman nib and feed, it takes a different kind of cartridge. We'll take both Lamy and Parker Long, or two short Parkers back to back. This is one of the things that some cartridge lovers really like. You take two short cartridges, drop one inside, put the other one inside the pen, and then when you run out, you have a spare. And you just pull out the spare and plug it in. Now, you probably get about the same capacity of ink if you used a Parker Long in there instead of the two short ones. Here's a Parker Long. Fits in there very snugly. Goes all the way. But uh, you might want to mix up your inks uh, on the go. Who knows? Then we have... A pen very similar to the Moonman 600S. This is the Kaigaloo 316, which you'd think would have the same kind of capabilities as the uh, Moonman does. But this Kangaroo only accepts Lamy long cartridges. It will not accept the Parkers. Fascinating, huh? 
Wake up. Now for my pen BBS pens, which started this whole experiment. Originally, I just assumed they took standard international cartridges, but far from it. They are kind of a mixed bag, uh, what they will and won't accept. We're going to go from the oldest to the newest, as far as me acquiring them. My first pen BBS pen was this gorgeous 308 in cedar. I just love this pen. It's just a beauty. What's interesting about this pen, I don't know whether it's one of the very, very early models. I didn't get it from Etsy. I got it on eBay. Um, but there's no ring on this. There's no O-ring. There's not even an indent for that O-ring uh, to be accepted in there. So you, you can't eyedropper this pen, even though all the other 308s I know of can be eyedroppered. I know I tried dry droppering this pen and I ended up with a mess, even with uh, uh, silicone grease on the threads. So the 308 might be Pen BBS's most famous and prolific pen. I might be wrong about that, but it seems to be their, uh, their staple. It does have issues, however. One of the issues it has is cap clearance. So there's very little clearance in that cap for nib swapping. Uh, that nib comes right up to the tip there. So if you put uh, Jovo or something um, in there, it might you might have to shave down the tail of that nib to get it in. The other issue is, wait for it. Wait for it! You guessed it, cartridges. Like its sister, the Lorelei, the 308 will take a Lamy cartridge so you can put a Lamy in here, and we're going to put the Lamy inside, and you can see it just fits inside there. It's a very, very tight fit, but it fits all the way, and you can screw it all the way down. So that's good to know. The 308s will accept a uh, Lamy cartridge. It will also take a Parker Short. So the Parker Short, I haven't got one that's open yet, and I don't want to pierce this. But the Parker Short fits in there, and of course, there's lots of clearance. But interestingly, you can't take two Parker Shorts and stack them inside the 308, even though the Parker Long is the same length as two Parker Shorts. It might have something to do with the thickness. Even if I turned them around like this, it didn't work. The newer model, 480. I really thought it would take a Parker long cartridge, but it doesn't. It just won't go in. Even if you pre-pierce the cartridge, it just won't go into that section. But it will accept a Lamy long cartridge. It's a very tight fit but it goes in and it screws down. Then we have the beautifully comfortable writer's dream, the 323. I really thought this pen would take all three combinations, but surprisingly, it will not accept a Parker Long or two Parker Shorts. It will, of course, accept one Parker Short, um, and it will accept a Parker Long cartridge. So the newest model from Pen BBS is the 491. I really thought this would take uh, both a Parker Long, two Parker Shorts, and a Lamy, but again, I was wrong. It does not take the two Parker Shorts, but of course, it will accept one Parker Short, and it will accept a Parker Long. Here's the Parker Long. As you can see, it goes right to the end of that. But it works. So there you go, pen BBS enthusiasts. Parker cartridges for you, the long ones. And the long ones are available both in US and Canada. These short ones here, I had to get through Amazon from the United States. And it took uh, four weeks for them to come. Airmail from Los Angeles. Four weeks, that's a long flight. 
Now let's turn to these three brand names I have right here. The top one is my Visconti Van Gogh. And I'm going to bring this out to say that most pen makers that make their own ink tend to go proprietary uh, with their cartridges. Pilot, Platinum, um, Lamy, and so forth. Um, but Visconti is a standard international cartridge. Here's an old standard international. Fits in there just fine. And you can put them in back to back. So you put one in the barrel and one in the section and you're good to go. So because they take standard international that also means that if you use converters you don't have to buy a, a branded Visconti converter. You can buy a standard international and save the money. That's a pretty pen, isn't it? Now, brought this one out because this is interesting too. This is the Parker 45. This is a vintage model. And of course you'd expect that it would take Parker long cartridges, which it does. Like that. It would take Parker shorts just like that. And of course you can bury one in the body, just like that, and you're good to go. Of course you'd expect that because it's all Parker. But what's also interesting is because, because Parker fits Pen BBS, Pen BBS will fit Parker. So here's a Pen BBS converter in a Parker 45 pen. And by the laws of logic and deduction, and I meant you, my dear Watson. That also means that the Pen BBS converter and the Parker cartridges all will fit a Moonman 80. I don't have a Moonman 80, but they are a millimeter by millimeter copy of this pen. And there are reasons behind that which are all legitimate. But interesting stuff. And here we have a cross pen, and it is a typical cross. This is a cross radiance. And the cross, of course, take cross cartridges. So cross will take cross, Parker takes Parker, Schaefer takes Schaefer, and so on and so on. So I only have two Chinese pens that I can't, I can't figure out what the HE double hockey sticks cartridge they take. And maybe you can help me with this. This is the Wing Sung 626, and I can't for the life of me figure out what uh, cartridge it takes. Now, I haven't tried a Schaefer. Now, maybe the standard Schaefer will fit that, but that's an odd size. And I, uh, so those of you that own a 626, if you can let me know in the comments below if you use cartridges, what cartridges you use for the Wing Sung 626 because that's a Schaefer balance look-alike. So I have to insert a correction here. Uh, I was looking at the Wingsung 626 and couldn't figure out what cartridge might go in here because I don't recognize this converter. But uh, where do you go when you want to do more research? But uh, I went to Chris Rapsick's YouTube channel. That's Chris Rap 52 And he, of course, did a a video on the 626 uh, about a year ago and there was a section in there where he talked about this being a platinum style uh, converter. So I'm going to assume that if that's a platinum style converter that platinum cartridges would fit the Wing Sung 626. And it's not something I have uh, checked out but I will go get some platinum cartridges and give it a try. And the other is this pen here. This is a very small pen. <laughs> this is just the section, an extra section that I have of my wife's pen. It is the Natami Inception. And I can't get anything to fit that section, nothing at all. So if anybody knows what cartridge will go into a Natami Inception, please let me know. 
And that is a look at my cartridges. Please comment below if you have any other solutions. Again, I'm not a cartridge dude, but inquiring minds want to know. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified when I post a new one. As always, thanks for watching, and that's all she wrote.